I'm Eric Stark. I'm here with Mike Grossman, Sunny News, and sports writer Gordy Jones. Back another year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get it right one of these years. <laughs> There's yeah. always a first. Uh, I don't think we were. <laughs> now you're being I had them all right last year, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. People aren't going to watch the video. That's how I remember it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do two segments here. One, let's talk big picture. Just overall NCAA tournament. What do you like? What do you dislike? Let's talk first. Who didn't get in? Did you think Drexel got job to your guys? Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's a sizable argument for that. They won 19 in a row and you know, a conference that has gained some respect in the, in the Colonial. But, you know, it, it's one of those – it's the thing I like least about March Madness, that the conference tournament counts more – than what you did the previous three months. So it really right. hurts these smaller conferences, these, well, the Colonial isn't a one-bit conference, but a, a conference like that, I mean, it, it, you, what you do in a week counts more than what you did in three months. And that that's the only, really the only problem I have with March Madness. They're going to say, uh, the, the argument against Drexel is their non-conference schedule. Right, right. Um, you know, I, I, I think Drexel probably should have been in. I, I'm, I'm of, the, of the opinion, I think I probably say this every single year. There's two competing philosophies here. Strongest possible field and rewarding people for having had great seasons. And to me, 27 wins is... is Almost all you need to know. I'm more on the side. I'm more of the side of rewarding great seasons. But right. the committee is avowedly. They say this all the time, and they pretty much back it up. They are strongest possible field. They don't care what conference you're in. They don't care mid major. They they don't. They say they don't see that, and they mostly act like they don't see that. Brief answer. RPI played a bigger bigger. Role this year, do you think? Then the strength. No, I don't think it played a bigger. I think it played about what it normally does. I think people are starting. There, there, there are. There are. I'm going to use the uh, loaded term here. Advanced metrics that are Whoa. that are better than the RPI, and I think they're starting to like this. Ken Pomroy's right. uh, his, his rankings are really good. ESPN has come up with one now. I, I think they're starting to refer to those more, and those are starting to get accepted in the parlance the way the way Bill James has worked in in baseball okay. twenty years ago. That kind right. of thing. Uh, I, I think that's happening, but still, the RPI is, is probably has more significance than it should. Okay. Mm. Yes, both of you. How many teams think can win this thing? Um, half dozen, maybe. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. that's, what, that's the, exactly that what range. I was going to say. You know, yeah. right, right in that range. I mean, you know, you you have to lean toward Kentucky, North Carolina, Ohio State teams like that. I mean, uh, maybe Baylor as a three seed, slightly underrated because they're in a bracket with Duke, who, which is not a team that I think is really deserving of a number two seed. I don't, I don't think it's a, you know a vintage Duke team by any stretch, mm-hmm. and you know I think Baylor could could and will take them out if it comes to that. So teams like that, I mean, there's, there's probably just a few. I mean, but at the same time, it's probably good because there's no one team that you can say, okay, this is the team. You know, yeah, I, 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 think the, I think the ones and twos, the ones and twos really look strong to me this year. Right. I think more than in, more than any other year. Even I Duke, you like Duke? I, I like Duke. Okay. I mean, I think oh, body of work. Rounds, Duke is Duke so. is okay. I, Duke, Duke has, in, in my view, the best basketball coach. In America, and maybe one of the best ever, and and Duke has this really goofy team that doesn't fit. They have like seven two guards and the Plumley family. I mean, that's their team, <laughs> and, and 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 I have a problem with both sides of that. Well, <laughs> to be okay. honest with you, yeah, I, I, I do too. But twenty seven wins and, and and a more or less deserving, I think, two. You know, maybe they should be a three year instead of a two. But I, I mean, like everybody thinks Tom Izzo is one of the best two or three coaches in America, including me. Right. Last year. They had a year where they overscheduled and it didn't work and their right. season kind of got derailed. Right. They were like almost under 500. Right. Duke is having that season right now and they have 27 wins and they're a two mm-hmm. seed. I mean, uh, Shashevsky has called out that team and said he called out their effort and their mental toughness. Mm-hmm. 27 wins. I mean, I just think this guy. Yeah, but I, I just feel like the first part of that equation you said where they have seven two guards, they, I think they shoot almost too many threes. Where And you eventually get to a point in the tournament where you have to have something inside. You have to have something more than the arc. They're deeply flawed. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that I think they're good. They haven't been the same since Zubek was there. Let's put, <laughs> let's put it on the table right there. <laughs> okay, if there's, oh, the if there's a half dozen teams that can win this thing, does that mean there's going to be less upsets? Michael, I'll start with you. I, I, I don't think so because when, when, when ESPN on Sunday night, when they put up those, like, here's the one seed, and Rocket what do you think about their chances? I said, I like their chances. This doesn't look too tough to me for Syracuse, Kentucky, North Carolina. <clears throat> 
But what's going to happen with all these games underneath her? I got no idea. I think it's going to be Thursday and Friday are going to be nuts, I think. It's it's the two best sports days of the year, (laughs) Thursday and Friday, when you have games... You know, literally going from noon until what two a.m. Literally, oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh, mean, yeah. it's it's I the best. It. It's the two best sports day. days of the year. I, I mean, it I really is, more. and it's like you you can't get enough of it, and it's for that very reason because there's always going to be games that surprise. And I think there's so many interesting this year in particular, so many interesting style matchups. Memphis against St. Louis in, in terms of style Billikens. of play. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy. I you know and. Think about that coaching matchup. Rick Majerus against this 12-year-old kid, you know? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I mean, it's it's great. I, I I think there's I think there's half a dozen games like that that are like that are like boxer versus puncher kind of thing. I I, I you know, I'm I've I, I wrote on my blog last night. I I have I haven't looked f- so forward to a Thursday since March of 2011. Wow. Any interesting players? Maybe their team's not very good. I'm thinking of a Steph Curry a couple years ago. He actually wrote his team wrote him pretty good. Yeah. For a while. Any players stand out? Well, I, we've we've talked about this off air just about the, the kid from Lehigh, C.J. McCollum, who I've actually I watched him on TV a couple times against Bucknell, and really an impressive guy, better than the Patriot League probably could have played anywhere. But it's probably one of those things that he went to the right place where he got the, the, the time, he right. got the ball. And, you know, a player like that, I think, is, you know, it's it's going to be a one and done for Lehigh, but I, th- I think he's an interesting guy. Anybody for you, Mike? Yeah, I, I like him, too. I, I like a, a really a really funky team is Missouri. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they, I, I, I'm going to make a goofy reference to a team they remind me to, but that'll take too long. Uh, the old Louisville teams. They used to start, like, five, six, seven yeah, guys, you know? Yeah, that, okay. Derek Smith. But you know, they're even the smaller Rays. than that. Yeah. They're even smaller right. than that. I mean, I mean, right. and, and uh, they, they play full court, man-to-man. They try to get turnovers. If they don't get a turnover, they... They kind of forget about playing defense. They're not. They're not that great defensively. But they're they're hard to play against. Uh, they're they're. Uh, I I think a potential uh, Missouri Michigan State game in a regional final. It's very interesting matchup pretty cool, potentially. Pretty cool. yeah. yeah. So you're saying it's a lot of fun. Take off work Thursday Friday. Oh my God! If you if you you are not a real American if you work on Thursday. Absolutely true. 